Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 11 of our F2 2020 Mick Schumacher career mode. Yes, we're finally back uh, with this series. I missed out on uploading videos last weekend from it. I was just doing some other things uh, with the channels, getting a few other bits and pieces sorted. But today, yes, we are back ready for the penultimate race weekend of the Formula 2 season. This, you know, has been a very much up and down roller coaster of a championship. And with Russia and Abu Dhabi left to go, things are looking rather interesting for us in the Drivers' World Championship. If you missed out on the last two videos that went live from the Italian GP weekend, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking them out. Of course, there will be spoilers in three, two, one now. So, heading into the Russian GP, 90 points the gap now to Artem Markov, who is still somehow holding on to P2 in the Drivers' World Championship there. We could become champion today if we have a good enough result here. There are currently 92 points left available uh, between now and the end of the season, so we simply need either pole position or, what, 8th place or ninth place with the fastest lap points as well in this feature race here. So, yeah, we could be world champion today in this race. Now, that also does require either Artem Markov to win uh, with pole position and then, yeah, uh, no, he, he doesn't quite need fastest lap. Um, no, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't quite need the fastest lap, but I think, yeah, no, he actually, no, he will, because he's on count back as well there. So that's what Markov and Joe need to do this weekend. Let's dive into the Russian GP. Quickly, before we jump into this video, though, Codemasters, once again, have been hooking us up with some exclusive deals for you guys. Between now and the end of Saturday this week, there are some mega savings on some of your favourite Codemasters titles. If you haven't tried it, F1 2020 yet, this is your chance. £14.40 currently over on Green Man Gaming there. Dirt 5 as well at £18. Dirt Rally 2.0, just £4. And on top of those prices, you can save another 10% by using our discount code as well. The links to everything will be down in the description. This is quite possibly the best offers you're going to get for these games that so far that have been around a win 2021. So yeah, make sure you go check them out. Links, like I said, will be down in the description. You also help the channel out. Obviously, if you guys do offer to use our links as well, so it'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. But let's dive into the video. So again then, as we head to the Russian GP, apparently we are now invisible in our F2 car. But we are ready then for one shot qualifying around this Russian GP circuit. Obviously, not the best track in the world in Formula 1. It's, it's not a track that I think's ever... Yeah, no, it definitely hasn't had a championship decider either at any point in the past. But we'll wait and see as to what can happen this weekend. Obviously, we get the setup all sorted, ready to go. Just make a couple of obviously tweaks here and there. We're still yet to have a pole position this year. I thought last weekend that Russia, uh, Italy even, probably would be one of our best chances of a pole, but apparently not. And as we head into this weekend, maybe just maybe the Russian Grand Prix can be where we can finally get this car onto the front of the grid. As we head down in towards Turn 1 for the first time, well, into Turn 2, that kink, yeah, despite you know, even in a Formula 2 car, not really much of a corner. That being said, though, that... Is way too late on the brakes as Cam Eilat is going to inherit the lead currently in this session. I've got to get used to the Formula 2 cars once again, so I think this is probably yeah, not going to be a particularly good qualifying lap when all is said and done. Obviously, we are using the new McLaren GT3 rim as well that we've got. For those of you that only watch the F2 career mode, yeah, new wheel now. As well as, yeah, I'm just using the F1 braking points everywhere, which is not what we need to be doing in this qualifying session there. But again, if... Callum Eilot takes pole position. I think it is then just Markov who can potentially take this World Championship away from us when all is said and done. No, I think, yeah, no, if it's not Guan Yu Zhou or Artem Markov, we will be World Champion at the end of qualifying for this Grand Prix. Max Uchita now up into fastest. So could we win the World Championship today in under two minutes and finishing last? That, that would be quite an impressive feat to walk away with it. Obviously, we still want to try and pick up some more wins before now and the end of the season there as Eilat and Matsushita trading the lead at the moment. I don't think... It's been a long time, actually, since we won a race. That's not going to help us, though, as I think that's the second time in three weekends we've managed to spin it on our qualifying lap, just overstepping the mark just a bit too much. And, yeah, that's definitely going to leave us at the rear of the field ready for the Russian GP. Not quite the qualifying we were after 
when all is said and done. But rounding the final couple of corners, though, Callum Eilock is going to take pole position. We are therefore, if I'm mathematically not mistaken, going to become the world champion as well. Pirouette over the line for style points? Why not? The grid is all set for the race tomorrow, but before we go, let's quickly remind ourselves of our top three, which are Eilat, Armstrong, and Nobuharu Matsushita. The grid is set then, so that just leaves the race itself. Join us tomorrow, where we'll be live with all the action, and until then, goodbye. There we go, then the end of qualifying for the Russian Grand Prix. It is Kyle Eilat who gets himself on pole position with the four bonus points there. Armstrong in P2, and Matsushita there and Mazepin in his home Grand Prix up in fourth place. Giuliano Alesi had a Guan Yu Zhou in sixth, and you can see the rest of your top ten there. Our teammate Robert Schwartzman in his home GP down in tenth place there at the end of qualifying. Uh, Drogovic, the right at the back of the grid. That's a rather big surprise. And then Markov as well, our still nearest championship rival, down in sixteenth place. But we're coming from the back then. We might just come from the back as well in Abu Dhabi, obviously, if we have now wrapped up the world title as well. But let's dive in then here to the Russian GP. And here in Russia, today's race is about to start. We're at the Sochi Autodrome, and the drivers on the grid are almost ready to begin. Join us as we enjoy today's Formula 2 event. Let's examine the Sochi Autodrome then. Two DRS zones around this 3.6 mile circuit, one on the long run towards turn two, and another leading into turn 13. 18 corners in total and plenty of opportunities for the drivers to push their cars to the limit. With so much time spent at full throttle, engine failures are a risk that teams must be prepared for. With me at Sochi for the Russian event is Davide Valsecki. This is a long and complex circuit. Davide, what are your thoughts heading into it? Hi Alex. Yeah, you're right. This is still a very exciting circuit. Lot of winding turns and high speed straights. The racing here should be extremely close from start to finish. I think we'll see a great race today and I can't wait to get underway. We're almost ready to go then and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Callum Eilot has a good view of turn one from his pole position slot with Marcus Armstrong alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Matsushita, Mazepin, Giuliano Alesi and Joe, Piquet, Deruvela, Tictum, Robert Schwartzman, Giotto, Delatrat. Sean Galeo and Aitken, Nisani, Markolov, Lungard and Guillaume Samaya, Sonoda and Marino Sato, Dragovic and Mick Schumacher rounds off the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So here we are then, ready on the grid for the Russian Grand Prix. Championship again, if I haven't failed me maths, all done and dusted. We haven't got anything to worry about. Now into the final four races of this season. So yeah, we can really just go out, go out there and have a bit of a laugh this weekend. The one-stop strategy that was always uh, pretty simple. We're, we're going to take a risk. We're going to go on the alternate strategy in this one here today. We, we may as well. Again, we, we haven't got nothing to lose at this stage of the World Championship there. But starting from the back, hopefully we can try and slice our way through the field. I'm a bit worried that Davide Valsecchi said this track is exciting. Uh, in... What world? I, I don't really know. But let's dive in then here to the Russian Grand Prix feature race. Looking forward to it. Interesting to see where we can come through to by the end of this one. Five red lights. And it is going to be the longest hold in the world. But it is finally lights out. And away we go. Obviously, starting on the harder tyres was never going to give us a particularly great start. And then also the fact we're on a wheel is never going to help us either. As we head down in towards the first corner for the first time. Cars three and four wide. Up the road there is we're just going to sit at the back in towards the first turn. Not going to bother taking any risks as we try and get the power down on the exit. Drogovic and Sato already going side by side just in front of us as we head down in towards turn three. Just about flat out in qualifying trim. A bit of a blend on lap one. As well, have a look up the inside of the pair. And they're a bit worried about going into the back of Sonoda. We do get away with it. And a cheeky double overtake. At the start of this race, it's everyone just trying to, to settle down into position there. There's Markle of Lungard battling it out. The Sonoda trying to go a bit defensive on ourselves. 
Oh, actually, he's going to have a look at the inside of Samaya into the next corner. Give me Samaya. Seems to be hero zero a lot of the time in this championship. As we just if we are on the curve there on the way in. Thought we were going to lock up into the back of Sonoda again. But again, we just like get away with it. Can we get the power down? Onto the back straight. Yes, we can. Give me some eye. Gets squeezed out there, so doesn't get the best run at the corner. We get some slipstream as well from young Yuki Sonoda. We might be able to get a good run on the pair room. Might be able to go up the inside of the young Japanese driver. Up the inside we go. No, Sonoda actually beats us on the brakes there on the quicker rubber, and there's nothing we can do in that situation. Coming towards the end of that one, though, I think it is Armstrong leading the way ahead of Iot. Sticking to the back of Yuki Sonoda. He might be a man we can try and work our way with throughout the field, but I don't think he's quite got enough pace in this Grand Prix early doors then. As always, the mediums and the super softs are not really too big a difference on the pace delta, as this time around we're trying to look up the inside of Sonoda. Again, he tries to turn in on me, but this time around we're much braver on the brakes as we're getting the car into the groove at the moment, and we're up in a P18 of the race. Next up then is Armstrong's teammate Christian Lungard running very, very far down the order at the moment. Still ahead of homeboy Artem Markolov. We'll see how many Russians we can get past in this Grand Prix. Is here. Armstrong still leading the way at the end of two ahead of Eilok and I think Matsushita still P3. Sonoda trying to look for something down in towards turn one. Who is going to be the battle on the late breakers? Sonoda has a look at the inside. Oh, he squeezes out wide. He's still there, though, as we try and put the power down on the exit of the corner. But on the inside through turn three, yeah, you just can't maintain the same sort of momentum. Obviously, you can in a Formula 1 car there. And we do hold on. We haven't quite made as much progress as I'd hoped we would in the early stages of this race. But I guess I've got to remember the fact that oh, towards the end, obviously, we're going to be incredibly quick in comparison to everyone else here. We're still stuck in a huge DRS stream from ourselves pretty much up to about P5, I think, Wang Yuzhou at the moment in that fifth spot causing a bit of a train as he's battling out with someone else there. Not too sure who he's battling with at this stage of the day. I think it's Giuliano and Lacey saying that, but Lungard now going a bit defensive on us, so apparently we're filling his mirrors. Oh, Lungard takes way too much curve in towards the final chicane of the lap. That was just very much sort of sat on his gearbox there as we head in towards the final couple of corners. Running just a little bit wise over the Astro Turf. Can we get a good run out of the final turn? See if we can now get a run on Christian Lungard as we head back down in towards turn one. We haven't got the most aggressive aero package in the world, like we've seen at a couple of tracks this year. Obviously, Spar and Monza are probably most notable for that, but we are still getting a bit down the straight. There's all Lungard a bit early on the brakes in towards one. I think the super soft tyre is starting to go off just a little bit for a lot of these runners, and now you can just see... Oh, he wants to have a look up the inside, or oh, apparently not up the inside, as Lungard just doesn't seem to stop turning in on me in that situation. That was all a bit close for comfort. Not too sure what Lungard was thinking there. But apparently, yeah, we definitely won't get any room, despite the fact we quite fairly made it to the inside of him. Into the corner. Don't do that. Heading on to lap six, though, still all over the back of Christian Lungard here. I'm quite surprised with just how well... The AI have been able to take their tyres so far in this Grand Prix, but if Lungard's going to be aggressive defending... Holy moly, Lungard, that was... That was a swipe, is what that was. And we almost bin it. Lungard keeps his point in a straight line. He picks up some front-wing damage in the process there, but that all got a little bit chaotic as we head through the first corner, but somehow we've come out the other side alive, and somehow we've gained a place in the process as well. No idea what that was all about, but we've got away with it. As Lungard, yeah, tried to take a swipe at us, we then got up the inside, we then dropped it on the exit, and he kept us pointing on the straight and narrow. Oh, there we go, we got our first pitters in as well, at the end of lap six, which is surely not going to be long before we pit in onto those super soft tyres. Where is it going to move us up to in this Grand Prix? Schwartzman's decided to stay out for another lap, so I guess we're going to have to go to the end of lap eight here in this race. But yeah, we're on to P11 then, off the Grand Prix, a couple of seconds back behind Roy Nassani moment, but still doing well. And towards the end of lap 7, then everyone else is going to be into the pit lane. Don't think we're going to see any of the AI try and brave it an extra lap on those medium tyres there, but that's reassuring for us to know that obviously they won't have a load of laps whether they're on much fresher rubber than myself. And yeah, we are going to go from last to first then in eight laps here in the Russian Grand Prix. So we're still getting faster and faster 
as this race goes on. Armstrong, a bit of P2, and I think Ilop might just inherit it again. Having a look at that then, I don't think... I think Ilot, yeah, has been well and truly pushed back down the order through the pit stop window there. Armstrong is now up into the net lead of the Grand Prix with Matsushita second and Mazepin up into P3 in his home race. And now the moment of truth time then as we get ready for our pit stop. Where are we going to re-emerge in this Grand Prix? They're actually wall up the wall on the way in. Nice and tidy into the pit lane though. Did we pick up any damage from that? We did get a warning for corner cutting. I think we got away with no damage there. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where we come back out in this Grand Prix as well as the fact just how quick we're going to be on some fresher, quicker rubber than the rest of the field. There goes Marcus Armstrong back up into the lead of the Grand Prix. Come on, nice quick pit stop. That's exactly what we want. Pit, quick pits. Uh, no, in a nutshell, 6.3 is not a particularly decent one there as we're all the way back down out of the points we go. Where are we going to rejoin in this Grand Prix? I'd love to get reverse grid pole by the end of this. But I think we're going to be back down into what? P17? Are we going to stay ahead of Markov here? I think, uh, no, not quite staying ahead of Markov. We might be able to get him into turn one though, saying that. I'll have a look at the inside. As we do make the move work. And yeah, P16 then. We've got to try and make up eight spots by the end of this if we want reverse grid pole. First up then is going to be Sean Galel here, and it really hasn't taken us long to get to the back of the Dams driver. Up the inside we go in towards the final skin. It's going to be a cheeky little move, but it is going to be a move that we've now pulled off as Armstrong, new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. So maybe those mediums aren't so bad to be on. Team saying they're loving our overtake though. Next up, Roy Nassani. All over the back now of Roy Nassani. Is, oh, he's going to give us a big old squeeze. Thought he was going to give us a space there, but decided suddenly at the last moment he was going to turn across me. Just a little bit. I think, again, we've just got away with that, though. I think it was all tyre face to contact with other objects, but we've gone right around the outside of Nasani on the exit of the next corner there, but a bit cheeky from Roy, but we do pull off the move again. Next up, Aitken, is we've got a little battle pack just in front of us. Extends up to Guan Yu Zhou inside the points at the moment there in 10th place, but, I mean, I'd be amazed if Guan Yu Zhou doesn't be on uh, Mar uh, Markalov, even, I should say by the end of the season there. But look at that, he's dropped back down to P11, so I wonder if Quine New Zhou's actually got some damage in this Grand Prix, and whether this could really help us out as he holds up some other cars here. Can we try and get a good run on Aiken? Look at the extra grip these tyres have got at the moment. That is ridiculous. Up the inside of Delatraz as well. That one was a bit more aggressive. That one, I'll be honest, wasn't even intentional. Man. They just broke so much earlier than I was expecting. Is this Quine New Zhou going to pick? No, he is not. So, Guan Yu Zhou clearly doesn't feel like he's got enough damage, if any, at the moment. So we head through the final corner. He might have an issue with the car, perhaps? It's quite a common thing for Guan Yu Zhou over the course of last season. Yeah, he's definitely got some straight line speed deficit. Not too sure what that's about, but up to 11th then, as we head onto lap 11. As so yeah, we made up three places in the last lap. Next up, Giotto. Now all over the back of Luca Giotto. Can we try and get a good run? Out onto the back straightaway here. If we can get past him, it might be me and our teammate Schwartzman desperately trying to catch up to the reverse grip pole position there. And look at that, right around the outside of the Otto we go before we can get into the next braking zone there. And yeah, now Schwartzman and I are going to try and close up a four second gap to Dan Tipton further up the road. Coming on to the penultimate lap then, all over the back of our teammate Robert Schwartzman here, but he is not closing in on Tipton as quickly as I would have wanted there. And we need to be careful. Because if we lose too much time behind our teammate, we're probably not going to have enough time ourselves. Close up to Dan Tictum in the latter stages of this Grand Prix. We need a good run out onto the back straight. These super soft tyres definitely starting to reach the end of their decent life as well here. But we've got a good run on our teammate Schwartzman here. He's going to try and go a bit defensive, but we'll have a look. Stick to the racing line. And we should be cleanly past him into the next breaking zone. Yes, we are. And now we've got one lap to go to try and close down a one and a half second gap to Dan Tictum here. Much easier said than done at this stage of the day because these tyres very, very much hit the cliff. If we can get into the DRS, if we can get to the DRS for that back straight, we might stand the chance, but at the moment, we're going to have to absolutely nail the rest of the lap to even get close to think about it. Heading through sector two then on this final lap and the gap to Dan Tictum is still coming down at the moment. We are pushing to the absolute limit trying to close it in. It's down to 1.1 and like I said, if we can get the DRS 
for the back straight. I might just believe we have a chance here, but I think we're just going to be outside the zone as we head out onto the back straight with her. I think we were at a tenth of one second and then about half a tenth there. And no, we haven't got the DRS on Dan Ticton here, so I don't think, yes, yeah, surely there's going to be no chance there. Let's then go drastically wrong for the young Englishman as we head in towards the final sector of this Grand Prix. I think Ticton is going to be safe. And he's going to walk away with reverse grip pole ready for the sprint race tomorrow. But in towards the final few corners, though, it is going to be Marcus Armstrong who is going to walk away with the first race victory of the weekend there. It is going to be Matsushita in P2. And I think Mazepin has just about held on to P3 in his home race. But from the very back of the grid, we certainly gave it our best shot. But at the end, it's not quite reverse grip pole, but it is P9. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Victory for ART then after a quality performance. Tell me, Davide, what was the key to this success? The difference was in the strategy. Credit to the driver for sure. But races like this really drive home how much of a team sport this is. They did a lot of work on the pit wall to really make the most of each stint and to make the best use of this virus. But that said, all of that would have been for nothing without a talented hand on the wheel. An amazing race today and a very well-deserved one too. The team worked very hard to get exactly the right setup out of the F2 car. It works for them and the results speak for themselves. ARTGP winners today. It was not the best weekend for our championship leader and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? My driver of the day is Mick Schumacher. With this team, Prima Power Team, they made the difference on the race strategy. Fantastic. On to the teams then. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. Goodbye for now then, but we really are just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the feature race here from the Russian Grand Prix. And it is Armstrong who takes home the race victory there ahead of Matsushita and Nikita Mazepin getting his podium at the end of his home Grand Prix there. Callum Eilat in P4 ahead of Alessi, Pedro PK, J. Anderuvala and Dan Tictum will be your reverse grid pole sitter tomorrow. And then both Premers 9th and 10th at the end of the race there. And obviously, despite Guan Yu Zhou and Markov not able to score points, we did do enough to mathematically wrap up the title anyway when all is said and done there. So yeah, very, very happy with that. You can see the rest of your finishes there. Like I said, Guan Yu Zhou down in 19th at the end of that one. Had an absolute mare towards the end of that Grand Prix. In fact, oh, he must have had damage. There's no way it could have been anything else there. Markov down in 15th as well there. Is, is Guan Yu Zhou seriously not going to jump Markov by the end of this title? I've really got no idea at the moment. But that means championship-wise is Armstrong and Matsushita who have been much more consistent in the second half of this season up to P2 and P3. Official confirmation, though, as well. We are officially Drivers World Champion. Very, very happy with that, like we said from qualifying yesterday. Yeah, the, the maths is definitely in our favour now. 82 points with three races to go. A maximum of 63 available now. So, yeah, we can enjoy the last three races of the season nonetheless there. But yeah, Matsushita as well gets the jump on Markov, Joe and Drogovic as well as our teammate Schwarzman there who's down into 7th place. PK gets the jump on Lungard and Sonoda as Mazepin down into 11th place there. Eilok jumps uh, Luca Giotto as well there and that is the last of your movers. Constructors wise though we're still 83 clear at the top of the championship but both MP and ART still closing in the gap at the moment there. High Tech get the jump on Carlin for P6 in one of the closest battles still ongoing towards the end of the year. There's still, yeah, quite a few battles to watch for up and down the field nonetheless. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we will be back tomorrow ready for the sprint race. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.